I've always had an ambivalent relationship with lounge music. I mean, I hate it, but most people do. And I'm talking about the kind of music that's played in lounges like uh, Las Vegas in the in the 1960s and 70s, uh, you know, when I was a kid. The, the stuff that's played in department stores and elevators and places like that. And even if you weren't alive back then, you've heard this music and maybe you hate it as well. I mean, there are uh, aspects of brilliance in it because, you know, th this music is put out into the world only to make money. And there are corporations like the Muzak Corporation that put it out. And, um, you know, but they have to hire musicians, real musicians, and many of them are brilliant and they put elements of brilliance in this. And they also have to hire composers who have... Uh, elements of brilliance in their music and they're probably really talented musicians otherwise but um, occasionally there's actually an entire brilliant piece but it's only there for making money for corporations which means it's not really there for making the world a better place or anything like that so for me this is very much analogous to my whole relationship with technology you know I'm I'm speaking into a camera right now, and that's turning everything into bits and pixels and all these things, and you're looking at it on a screen, and that's bits and pixels as well. It's kind of miraculous, actually. But um, it's not all the whole story. Those bits and pixels are being stored, and whatever platform you're on, maybe YouTube, whatever, they're harvesting all of this data for harvesting our attention so that they can sell it to the highest bidder, which also isn't there for our benefit. It's just for maximizing their profit every quarter. And there are other technologies that are super destructive, you know, like the military industry, etc. And that's maximizing their profits and not def definitely not for the benefit of us. So there's a lot of ambivalence in all this. Of course, technology can do all sorts of amazing things. I've been playing with it all my life. I love playing with it. I love sharing it. I love all sorts of aspects of it. So it's a mixed bag. Anyways, last summer uh, in, in August 2021, I was asked to be an artist in residence at uh, Monochrome, an artist group in Vienna run by a friend of mine, Johannes, and it's uh, funded, I think, from an organization called Q21, which does lots of amazing, cool things. And they put me up in this really cool apartment, amazing apartment, and that's where I did my work. It was also my studio, and um, I was there for seven weeks, and I didn't know what I would do, but they suggested if I wanted to, I could do a project that would be presented at Robo Exotica. And Robo Exotica is an annual robotics conference, and it's a real robotics conference. There's a lot of really sophisticated and also some not sophisticated robots that are, are put there. Uh, their theme is cocktails and lounges. Many of the robots mix cocktails and there's a lot of alcohol there and I don't even do alcohol but I've been to several of these and they're really really fun there's a lot of creativity that goes into it and, and uh, regardless of how sophisticated the robots are or the presentations there's a, a lot of whimsical um, uh, stuff in, in all of these robots and it, it's really creative and, and fun to be at this past summer in uh, September it was part of Ars Electronica a big uh, art world thing and, and Robo Exotica has always been on the fringe. Ars Electronica started that way in 1970s. Um, 20 years later Robo Exotica started <clears throat> also as a fringe thing and it's pretty much stayed fringe but now it's it had a part in Ars Electronica. So what I decided to do since I don't do alcohol not to do a, a cocktail mixing robot but to make one that makes use of things that I am interested in. And I want to make it fun to have something interesting to think about as well. So since I have been working on music synthesizers all my life, in the last five years doing my ArduTouch project, an Arduino-compatible music synthesizer that has a touch keyboard, thus the name, ArduTouch, um, I wanted to do something with that. And I thought for lounge theme, I could do lounge music. And what could I do with lounge music? You know, I have this ambivalent relationship, like I said. Maybe I could somehow express that. 
and I put it together with the same webcam that I'm speaking through, uh, to you through right now. And I didn't know much about facial recognition, but there's some really powerful open source tools available uh, for doing all sorts of things, including computer vision. So there's open CV, computer vision, that you can use for facial recognition. And facial recognition is another one of these things which is pretty amazing. You can do really cool things with it to automatically uh, identify people for your projects, but it can also be identified for other projects <clears throat> that aren't so much for our benefit as we know on platforms like Facebook and uh, things from various governments around the world, including the one that I was born under. And uh, there's a lot of interesting aspects to that that aren't necessarily positive. Some are, many aren't. So I, what my project does is it makes a claim. It will recognize your face and look at characteristics of it. And from that, determine your innermost desires. That's its promise. And based on that, it will calculate which song which lounge music song, which bad lounge music song, <clears throat> and perhaps that's redundant because it's pretty much all bad lounge music songs, and um, it will pick the bad lounge music song that will fulfill all of your desires. So that's the promise, and of course, technology always falls short of its promise, and that's certainly true with my project as well. I wanted to put 18 different music, uh, musical pieces in here, bad lounge music pieces, but um, I ran out of time and it was <laughs> pretty difficult. And a lot of them I didn't even have time to put the melody in. And I do have a lounge singer who is a text-to-speech engine, which is also open source. And uh, the lounge singer is kind of frustrated with his position in life, even though he's not alive and he uh, rants in the middle of pieces. Also, he can't sing because he's just text-to-speech and there's no pitch control. So, but he does have a bad English accent. Uh, so that's the introduction to the piece. It was shown at uh, Robo Exotica in September. I did win an award, yay, but everyone wins an award at Robo Exotica, so it's not too special, but Robo Exotica is special nonetheless. And it, it, it got a lot of interesting interactions with people. So it was, it was fun. And it's a fun way to think about facial re recognition, these kind of technologies and the music, and it's all the pluses and minuses thereof. So what more can I say? I'm gonna give you a demo now. I'll have to set it up so when the transition finishes, you'll be seeing Lounge Looker in action. So here's all the hardware for Lounge Looker. It's got three of my RG-Touch music synthesizer boards, um, each with a different synthesizer programmed, programmed into it. And they are played by a Raspberry Pi, which is inside of here. It has these fans um, so that it has to cool down because when it's doing all the number crunching from open CV, open computer vision, uh, it, it gets pretty hot and it needs to be cooled down. And then I've just got uh, audio mixer. And then out of my um, screen here, that uh, H HDMI, and it has audio out where the text-to-speech engine goes in. And then the audio mixer mixes all the sounds from the synthesizer and the text-to-speech. And then there's a, a camera up here that will do the facial recognition. Okay, so I'll start the program and it will boot up. And first it gives the credits and then it resets the synthesizers. And now it gives its promise.
And here's my facial recognition, and it's calculating my desires. And everyone's labeled a consumer, <laughs> and it calculated my desires, and now it will play song number two. beautiful. <clears throat> Next, please. So it'll do me. And whenever it sees me, it does a random one. So let's see which one it will do for me next. After the credits and the resetting of the synthesizers. And um, it will then... Calculate my innermost desires and play the perfect lounge song music to fulfill them. Oh, it did it. What will it be? Number four this time. So there's a couple of examples. Uh, I wanted to put 18 songs into this, but I ran out of time. And for some of them, I didn't even have time to put the melody in. So, uh, but they all have rants and they're all kind of interesting, I think. And people seem to enjoy them. Some of them get a little dark, but some of the technology involved is kind of dark. So what can you do? Uh, yeah, so all this is open source. I'll put the link in the uh, description below. It's all on my GitHub. If you want to learn from it, use it any way you want. Feel free. Enjoy.